Bechvetek. As you likely know, I am quite obsessed with shooting or capturing the passing of time. And usually I do this with a bunch of digital cameras and I shoot thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of digital raw photos to then create high resolution video files out of them. Now back in January, I started a similar process. I started shooting a time lapse. However, I'm only using one camera and one photograph. This photo is an analog photograph. It's called a solar graph and the exposure time will be just over four months aka 10,520,000 seconds, give or take. Was my experiment successful and how does this all work? Let's find out. Hello, my name is Vithyana Pitama Tamlaps, what have we living on? There's a lot of Tamlaps travel and tutorials. That was a decent one, but that doesn't matter. In case you missed the first video that I made about the solar can, which I've linked up there, the solar can is a solar graph camera, which is pretty much a pinhole camera, which relies on very long exposures to expose a piece of photosensitive or light sensitive paper inside a can in this case. You can make them yourself, but I bought this one for I think about 14 or 15 quid from a company called Solar Can. I installed my solar can on the edge of my balcony right after the winter solstice, which is the shortest day, which is when the sun doesn't really go very high in the sky. As the seasons progress and as time goes on, the sun rises and sets wider and it goes higher up in the sky. You know, in, in summertime, we have the sun quite high up. In wintertime, it's quite low. Now, the idea with the solar graph is to capture that movement, to see the lines of the sun. Today, I'm going to grab the can, which is going to be a challenge in itself. I'm going to open it up, scan the paper and color grade it. Because of how this works and because of the materials used, I only get one shot at this. And maybe I installed it wrong or maybe water got in the can or maybe I'm going to mess up the scan and I might ruin this four months long project. So it's quite exciting. I'm a little bit nervous, but uh, even if it fails, it should make for a fun video, right? So step one, let's go grab the solar can. So here's the can. It's been sitting there through some really, really terrible UK weather, including crazy winds, rainstorms, uh, snowfall and so much more. As I said, the first challenge will be to take it down safely as I can't actually reach over this balcony to grab it. So I'm going to try and put some tape on there and then pull it up with the tape after I've snipped these, what do you call them? Zip ties, I guess. All right. I hope you can hear me. It's pretty freaking windy today. I've taped, I've taped a uh, bit of tape to the can. I'm now going to cut the zip ties. Make sure I don't lose them and then pull the can up and then I can grab it hopefully. So let's give that a go. I hope I'm not doing anything too stupid here. That's one. Oh yeah, I forgot that I taped the zip ties to it as well. Okay, so. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Secured. All right, sweet. Now I just gotta tape up the pinhole. That's it solar can retrieved. Step one, mission accomplished. I've safely retrieved the solar can. The front here is where the pinhole is. I've taped off that little uh, pinhole so there's no light hitting it. I'm in a dimly lit room and it should be sweet but I'm still quite nervous because we do only get the one shot. So I'm gonna pop the wide angle on there. I've got my scanner set up. What we gotta do now is pre-scan a template or a placeholder open up the can with a can opener, which I've got here, uh, because you can't pull it out through the, that gap. Got to open it like that. Uh, we do the pre-scan and then we put the paper on there and then we scan it. And I believe we only get like kind of one shot of this because of the light passing over the paper, ruining the exposure. So, fingers crossed, all right? Let's do this. Okay, so, sorry about the light and stuff. Obviously, I'm sure you understand why it's not too bright in here right now. The, this is about the same size as the paper that's in the can. So I'm going to pre-scan this and I'm going to also dial in the right settings because not every scanner scans in color, etc. So put that top left. Then uh, let's do that pre-scan. So we're setting the settings to color, 300 DPI, uh, size, uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter that. Format TIFF. If I now do overview, it's doing an overview scan. I don't know if you can see the light passing by, not really brief overview and then I think all I have left to do is open this up and hit the scan button. I might be doing this wrong. Um, very likely that I'm doing this wrong but let's give it a go. All right so we're gonna open the can. Should I kill that light? No. It's fine. Okay. Am I nervous? Yes. Can you tell? Probably. <laughs> um, let's do it I guess. I, I'm not... 
Oh, yeah, fuck. All right, let's go. Showing. It's kind of not what I thought it would do as far as opening. You can't see anything here, but that's fine. Oh. Okay, so got the, uh, got the top off here. Um, I had a quick peek in there and I didn't see much. So that's not great, I think. Yeah, I don't really know what to think. I was expecting to see lines at least, but I don't think I saw any. So I'm gonna take it out and scan it and then we can have a look at the scan while the paper is still under there. Um, uh, <laughs> the nerves. All right, how do I even take that out? All right, get the paper out. Got this, turning that down on there. Ah, oh, that's sticky, sticky paper. Scan. Oh, I didn't do anything. Scan, scan the document now, let's go. I do think I saw some lines, so it might, it might be all right. Ah, oh, it's a lot of light going over it now. You can't see it, but you can see the scan bar go over. It's scanning it in color at, color at 300 dpi, saving the TIFF file. I haven't been this nervous in a while. Yes, 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 yes. That's it, that's it. Oh my God, that's better than I thought. Um, now I gotta, I'm literally shaking, I'm literally shaking. Now I gotta roll the paper, put it back in there and cover it so it doesn't get further exposed. <sighs> oh, it's sticking to the paper. Let's roll the bad boy up, pop it back in there for now. I lost the original, um, I lost the original cardboard uh, packaging that the can came in, which is where you're supposed to put the paper in afterwards. But here we have it. You can't see it on the screen yet. Uh, it's gonna be for the big reveal, but that is most definitely a success. Now the next step is to, uh, first of all, I gotta save this file. And then the next step is to color degrade it to make it look like something that could uh, maybe feature in, in this little booklet here. So let's give that a go. God, I'm sweating. <laughs> Right, so I've imported the TIFF file into Lightroom Classic, which is what I'm most familiar with for color grading. You could do this in Photoshop, but I'm a Lightroom Classic kind of guy, mostly. I've cropped the image to just the scan, then I've flipped the image, then I added some contrast, some colors. I've played around with it a bunch. This is obviously, it's kind of, you know, it's photography, which is art, which is entirely subjective. You can make this look however you want it to look, but you're starting with a black and white photo. So I just went with a white point based on the trail of the sun, which gave us quite a blue image. I'll, pr I'll keep playing with it for a bit before I share it on social media, but I just want to share the big reveal with you now, uh, the end result of four months of exposing a single piece of photo paper. In three, two, one, boom. This is it. I hope you like it. I am freaking pumped. It's literally one of the coolest photos I've ever taken. I've never even come close to half the shutter speed for this photo, obviously, uh, but I really, really love the fact that you can see so much detail, and there's a couple of things you can do just as well. Like clearly the camera or the, the can was moved uh, at some point, maybe because of wind or vibrations because of wind, I don't know. Uh, you can really see how far the sun's moved. I kind of wish I stopped the exposure a little bit earlier so all the trails were in the paper. But uh, yeah, there's all these interesting things you can see. We can make out the shard, we can make out the city. Obviously, uh, you can see full sunny days, you can see cloudy days, you can see days where there was no sun at all. You know, we are in the UK still. But yeah, what an absolute, absolutely amazing, amazing photo and a cool little tool to have. And that's my experience with the solar can. This is not an ad, obviously, I would have disclosed that at the start, but this is, uh, I do have an affiliate link. I spoke to the guy that makes these and he sent me an affiliate link. So if you wanna get one yourself and you wanna support my channel and what I do uh, at the same time, you can, get, you can go and buy one through the link in the description down below. And that's pretty much it. I want to say a big thank you to all the channel members. We hit 90 members on last Friday's live stream and I'm freaking pumped about that. Uh, many more giveaways coming soon. Check out my newsletter and definitely check out the ultimate time-lapse guide to my ebook about time-lapse photography, all things planning, shooting and editing, world-class time-lapses. And that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. Bit of a different video. If you haven't seen part one, go check that out. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. Big thanks and may your skies be filled with fluffy clouds.